Right now, the abortion industry is pushing for one of the largest expansions of abortion that America has seen since Roe v. Wade, through the abortion pill. Since the 1980s, the abortion industry has been working on a plan to mass market self-induced abortions to women and girls through the abortion pill. And now, seeing that abortion businesses are rapidly closing, and fearing that Roe v. Wade will be overturned, they are pushing the abortion pill more aggressively than ever before. So how did we get here? What exactly is the abortion pill, and what are its dangers? Who are the major players behind it? And what can we do now to save women and children? This is the true story behind the abortion pill. The abortion pill regimen is currently approved by the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, to be taken up to the 10th week of pregnancy, although the abortion industry openly admits to using it for weeks after that. A baby grows rapidly in the first 10 weeks. Between five and six weeks, when many women first discover they are pregnant, the heartbeat can be detected and the baby's lungs and digestive system also start forming. At seven weeks, the main parts of the eye start developing, and at eight weeks, brain activity can be recorded. At 10 weeks, a baby is about an inch and a quarter long, all vital organs are in place, and the teeth are starting to harden and connect to the java. The abortion pill regimen consists of two drugs, mifeprex and misoprostol, taken one to two days apart. The woman first swallows the pill containing mifeprex. This blocks a pregnancy hormone called progesterone and kills the baby by starving him or her of nutrients. It is important to note that even after a woman takes mifeprex, it is possible for her to reverse its effects and rescue the baby if progesterone is administered soon enough. If a woman continues with the abortion procedure, she will insert the misoprostol pills into her cheeks or vagina. This will cause painful contractions and heavy bleeding to expel the dead baby from her uterus. This will take place wherever she happens to be, whether it is in her home, her car, or in her dorm room. After the child is expelled, she will be responsible for disposing of her dead baby on her own, usually by flushing her baby down the toilet. The woman is likely to see either the pregnancy sack containing her baby or identifiable baby parts. According to the FDA, women can expect bleeding to last 9 to 16 days, while 8% experience bleeding for more than 30 days, and 1% of women require intervention. Between 2000 and 2018, 24 deaths from the abortion pill were reported, most due to infection or undiagnosed ectopic pregnancy. As of 2018, nearly 4 million American children have been killed by the abortion pill. And as of 2017, the abortion pill accounted for 40% of all U.S. abortions. Out of a total of 862,320 reported abortions in the U.S. that year, the abortion pill was used 339,640 times. That's 930 children killed with the abortion pill per day. The abortion pill was developed by French endocrinologist Etienne-Emile Beaulieu. He had been a fellow researcher of Gregory Pincus, an early developer of the birth control pill. And in the 80s, Beaulieu worked as a consultant for the French pharmaceutical giant Roussel Uclaf. It was for Roussel that Beaulieu developed what we now call Mifeprex, though it was originally labeled RU486 the RU for Roussel Uclaf and 486 for the drug's serial number. In 1988, RU486 was approved for marketing in France, but Roussel faced severe public backlash because of opposition to abortion and because Roussel had another moral atrocity already in its wake. Roussel's majority shareholder was a company called Hoekst AG, which had emerged from the breakup of the German chemical company IG Farben. IG Farben was famous for manufacturing a cyanide gas known as Zyklon B, used in the gas chambers of the Nazi death camps during the Holocaust. As reported by the New York Times, IG Farben played so important a role in Hitler's war machine and in the Holocaust that it came to be called the Devil's Chemist. In addition to developing the gas chamber poison, IG Farben factories exploited more than 35,000 slave laborers, many from Auschwitz. It even built a concentration camp of its own to improve efficiency. Pro-lifers immediately called out Hookst and Roussel for creating poison to kill babies in the same way it had created poison to kill Jews. And their protests were enough to halt the abortion pill from being distributed in Europe and the United States. However, the French government intervened and ordered the distribution be allowed. The French Minister of Health said that from the moment government approval for the drug was granted, RU486 became the moral property of women, not just the property of a drug company. As has always been the case, abortion's moral atrocities were covered by holding up women as a human shield. Within two years, the French government was subsidizing the abortion pill. 
RU-486 was blocked from coming to the United States until January 22, 1993, the 20th anniversary of the Roe v. Wade decision, when Bill Clinton, on the second day of his presidency, directed FDA officials to bring RU-486 into the United States. In 1994, in exchange for product liability immunity, Roussel donated its rights to manufacture, market, and distribute RU-486 in the U.S. to the Population Council. The Population Council said its goal is to help achieve a humane, equitable, and sustainable balance between people and resources. In reality, the Population Council has deep roots in the American eugenics movement. Eugenics is the use of selective breeding as an attempt to improve the genetic quality of the human population, either by encouraging populations deemed superior to have more children or stopping those deemed inferior from having children. The Population Council was founded by John D. Rockefeller III in 1952 and today is funded in part by Bill and Melinda Gates, who gave over $11 million to the Population Council between 2018 and 2020 through the Gates Foundation. A prominent eugenicist named Frederick Osborne succeeded Rockefeller as president of the Population Council. Osborne once said, birth control and abortion are turning out to be the great eugenic advances of our time. Like Osborne, his successor Frank W. Notstein was also a member of the American Eugenics Society. His successor, Bernard Berelson, once suggested that if voluntary birth control methods were unsuccessful, the government should place a fertility control agent in the water supply of urban neighborhoods. Alan Guttmacher, founder of the Guttmacher Institute and longtime president of Planned Parenthood and vice president of the American Eugenics Society, sat on the Population Council's first medical advisory board. The Population Council launched the clinical trials needed for FDA approval. But there was a problem. Not one U.S. pharmaceutical company had stepped forward to research or manufacture the abortion pill. This is where the highly secretive Danko Laboratories comes in. Given how effective the pro-life movement was in pressuring Roussel and Hookst, abortion pill advocates learned that a single product company of confidential investors would be crucial in order to evade public scrutiny and protest. So Danko Laboratories was formed with the explicit, singular purpose of manufacturing and distributing the abortion pill for the U.S. market. In 1996, the David and Lucille Packard Foundation gave Danko a $14 million loan to bring it onto the U.S. market. Other early Danko investors included the Open Society Foundation, founded by George Soros, the Buffett Foundation, founded by Warren Buffett, and the Kaiser Family Foundation. Danko Laboratories was originally chartered offshore in the Grand Cayman Islands, but remains cloaked in secrecy, and to this day the FDA has not disclosed the identity or location of Danko's manufacturer. Danko still refuses to identify its current executives or its investors. In 2000, it was reported that Danko's manufacturer was Chinese pharmaceutical company Hualin, which was nationalized by the Chinese Communist Party in 1949. China's communist regime was one of the first nations in the world to approve the abortion pill in 1988. This is the same regime that imposed a monstrous one-child policy resulting in millions of forced abortions in China. This means that Danko could still be flooding lethal abortion drugs into the U.S. through a pharmaceutical company owned by the Chinese Communist Party. So where are we today? The abortion industry is trying to force the FDA to lift a set of safeguards called REMS, Risk Evaluation and Mitigation Strategy. These require the abortion pill to be dispensed by an approved clinic or hospital. Under REMS, abortionists who are approved to dispense the abortion pill must be able to date pregnancies accurately, usually via ultrasound, diagnose ectopic pregnancies, which can be life-threatening if undiagnosed, provide any necessary surgical intervention or have others set up to provide such care, ensure women have access to emergency care, and make sure the woman properly understands consent forms. The FDA claims their safety requirements mitigate the serious patient risks associated with the use of Mifeprex, saying that dispensing the drug in broader settings such as through retail pharmacies, could also expose patients to unnecessary and increased risks. But the abortion industry sees REMS as an obstacle to mass marketing the abortion pill. In every store, pharmacy, vending machine, via mail order, on websites, on college campuses, everywhere. The abortion industry tries to convince the public that the abortion pill is safe by constantly citing studies and clinical trials that are mired in conflicts of interest and lack transparency. For example, studies in the pro-abortion journal Contraception, as well as clinical trials conducted by Genuity Health Projects, are both funded by the David and Lucille Packard Foundation, one of the major financiers behind Danko, the manufacturer of the abortion pill. 
It is a major conflict of interest that a principal investor in the manufacture of the abortion pill would also be funding the studies and clinical trials that seek to show the abortion pill is safe. We can stop these efforts to push the abortion pill onto America's women and girls. First, go to liveaction.org to sign the petition to the FDA telling them to pull the abortion pill. Second, sound the alarm and educate the public on how the abortion pill kills children and harms women, the humanity and beauty of a child in the first trimester of pregnancy, the possibility of reversing the abortion pill if a woman changes her mind after taking Mifeprex, the real experiences of women who reversed the abortion pill or regretted taking it, and the aggressive push to flood our store shelves with abortion pills. Articles, videos, and other resources for all of this can be seen and shared from liveaction.org and found on our Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube pages.